is all about getting a dollar. Don't trust nobody. Keep your eyes open. Don't play with nobody. Focus on what you're supposed to get out of it. This shit is dangerous. It'll take you down. What's the difference between the rap game and the crack game? So the first question we just wanted to ask is like, why the Wild Style sample right on the Genesis? Like, what did that have to do with your Genesis and hip hop? Um, that was the first movie. That was the first hip hop movie, I think. Yeah. So when I saw it as a kid, I always had it in my head. Like, uh, there was a crew in there uh, called Double Trouble, and they had these routines back and forth, and it was real dope. So when I started working on the um, album. Um, it just hit me. It just, just felt like, go there. You know what I mean? Go, go, go there. I, I didn't even, it was even, I didn't even have to think about it. It was like, this has to start with something from Wild Style. Kind of, kind of, to kind of let you know how much of a fan of, of this culture I am. You know, so before you hear the album, let's go here. You know, I guess it was 10 years or something before, after the out, after Wild Style was out, something like that. So it wasn't really that long ago, but it seemed like so long ago that that movie was out. So boom, put it on the album. Yeah, and that drunk, Double Trouble routine you recreated later with AZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Sprite comes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so I wanted to ask about, uh, this comes from our user One Love. Uh, appropriately. Yeah, appropriately, appropriately enough from a New York state of mind. You've talked about the never sleep because sleep is the cousin of death line, history of that. But there's this line right after it that's just incredibly poetic and, and in some ways equally famous. Uh, Beyond the walls of intelligence, life is defined. And I was hoping you could break that down for us. We are not smart enough to figure out life. I feel like, I feel like life is tests, a bunch of tests. And we, we get a lot of answers right, but we're not going to figure it all out. Because if we figure it all out, there's no reason to be here. So to, all the way to the end, you know what I mean? So we can try as much as we want, and we can come up with a good routine to live by that can get us through and be happy with that routine in life. But, you know, so many people are just trying to figure out um, what it's all about, whether it's through... Christianity, church, and those people believe in that, or Islam, and, you know, Muslims believe in another way, but I feel like we ought to go, if you really want to understand it, it's beyond, it's not possible. I get, you know. Sometimes I think too much. It doesn't stop, man. Well, this is an easier question, I think. Um, yeah. So on Life's a Bitch, but also on the whole album, AZ only feature was that a conscious decision how did it come about why only him one him i guess i guess like when i met him you know he was up and coming and i was all about what's new you know um so i saw him he was up and coming and i think we i think we um we had a lot in common just like Growing up, we knew we had a mutual friend passed away, rest in peace, Yammy, who was the guy who came to me, said, you got to meet this kid from Brooklyn. Yammy was known all over New York. Yammy be in the Bronx. He'd be in Brownsville. He'd be in Astoria Projects. He'd be, he was like that. So a lot of people knew him, so he knew AZ from Brooklyn. And he kept telling me, you know, you guys remind me of each other in a way I think it can be big. Hey, this is before I even had an album out. You know, he's like, this could be big. So... When I did meet him and we go back and forth, you know, I liked I liked what he was doing the most. Yeah. And she's nice. She's, she's like incredible. And and once we did the song, once we went through a few verses, he had a few, he had a whole bunch of rhymes. And I knew I knew when I heard the right one, I I'd say, Yeah, that's the one. And he said that rhyme and I was like, Damn, it's crazy. Well, I had seen an interview where he actually said that like it took him a long time to feel like that wasn't a Oh, wow. It was like later that he felt like, he, like while it was happening, he was like, I did not feel like that was a good verse, which like, you know, yeah. for me, I remember hearing that the first time and thinking it was incredible lyrically. But he said it was like later after he realized the magnitude of the album that it was like, okay, maybe that was better than I initially thought. A lot of people that's really good at something, they do that. 
you know. So, um, on the world is yours, you have the, the line about dwelling in the rotten apple, you get tackled or caught by the devil's lasso. And so much of the album is looking at Queensbridge, right? And it's about Queensbridge, it's on the cover, the sides of the album are mm-hmm. named after, you know, different parts of Queensbridge. Right. When you reference New York City here, what was your view of New York City at the time? Because you talk about New York as a whole here with the rotten apple. Like, was when you thought of New York City, did you think of like outside Queensbridge, or was it entirely based on your experience? When what was when you when you talk about New York, the uh, album as a whole, the Rotten Apple, were you thinking about Queensbridge or about no, the city? No, New York, the yeah, the whole city, the Big Apple, you know. So it's the Rotten Apple too, you know. It's like we got all kinds of different ways of talking about the Big Apple, you know. So yeah, the Rotten Apple, because shit, it was uh, a lot of shit was like. It's grimy. There's a lot of griminess. So, you know, you see that. You live around it. And you just, you know, say stuff like that. Okay, on the same song, you say, Born alone, die alone, and prove to keep my crown of bone, and keep my sound alone, cave inside a thousand miles from home. So, we were just wondering about this lyric, both as it relates to you as, like, a person, because it feels a very personal line, but also literally at the time, considering like other crews that were out trying to do so like how did you feel just sort of also being kind of alone compared to like rolling with the whole crew and being associated with people? Well, I knew that was the, the new thing. I knew I was on to the new thing. It was the it was a time in rap music for solo artists to really, you know, take their position. Before that, it was everybody was a group. You had a few solo, had a few solo acts, of course, um, but it was an equal on each side, you know, solo acts and a bunch of groups. And I saw it changing. I saw it changing to being more focused on the one guy, like a Rock Kim or Cool G Rap, or when Ice Cube left NWA and became solo. I saw Buster leaving le- leaders of the new school. I saw it becoming like. People wanting to, they, they like the introduction of the crew, like, but then they, because after, afterwards, Wu, there were still groups. Wu-Tang came, and, and then they, they, like, they sprouted out and started doing solo projects, but at first it was a group. So groups was still cool, but I knew that um, one solo, it was, it was time we'd have at least 10 songs from that one guy that you like in that group. But, and plus, it's, it's more money for me if I'm solo, <laughs> really. <laughs> Like, I saw groups, like, fighting. I saw groups, like, mad because one got more attention than the other. And then it'd be the end of a great group because inside fighting, you know, some of the greatest bands and rap groups broke up because of whatever differences. And a lot of it had to do with probably finances. So I I saw that quick. Like, I, I don't need the drama. Like, we might start something big and then be fighting two albums down and now the whole dream is messed up because of... Nah, I just went dolo. Well, along those lines, do you ever feel like going dolo? Has, like, is there something you feel like you miss not having that crew around you? There's times like I need five of me's. <laughs> There's times I, I felt like that, but hey, you know, my bed, sleeping in. I made my bed. So on that same tune, this comes from our, our user Shine on and Bleak. Um, so you have the, the line about uh, the beach make me fall asleep. I keep falling, but never falling six feet deep. So what what exactly are you saying here? You obviously have another very famous line about sleep. Is this related to that at all? The beats make me fall asleep. I keep falling. I never. It's like, you know, a dream state. The beats, the beat, the you know, rap beats put me in a dream state. And I'm falling deeper in the dream state. And then I begin writing in that dream state. I'm in this whole world of my own. I keep falling, but never falling six feet deep. It's kind of like, you know, I said sleep because of death. Like, falling into the sleep here because of the beat is rocking me to sleep, but in a good sleep. Um, okay, so moving on to halftime, um, you say both, you know, Nassim Nazimir, Bucky Cross, Mass Hysteria, Nassim Nazimir, 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 I should have never mentioned Kid Wade. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that. That, that, that shit follows me around. Like, like, like again, like, 83 
It's break dance time, 84, 85, you know? So, the, again, another movie, hip hop movie, I heard of Beat Street. Some of y'all in the group, uh, New York City Breakers. You had the Rocksteady crew versus the New York City Breakers. And I started to pick out the names and know who's who. Crazy Legs and uh, 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 Mr. Wiggles, Mr. Wave. Mr. Wave was ill. He's like, because everybody wanted to be the best pop locker, right? But he's, his name is Mr. Wave. That means he's, he nails it. And then when he did his thing in the movie, he kills it. So I was like, I'm Kid Wave. Now I could not pop like this dude <laughs> at all. But in my head, you know, that's, that's what I, he was a hero. And then one day I saw him on my block. I, he was on my block, this dude from NYC Breakers, to battle this other dude. I'm like, this dude do movies. He don't have to do this shit. <laughs> but he's still in my projects. And I'm like, real well, mom, that's, that's Mr. Wave. She's like, I don't care who. Like, <laughs> I'm like, that's Mr. Wave. I got to stay outside. It's like, you know, it was after school. I was a kid. And it's like, I couldn't even watch the battle. I, I missed that battle. So that made him more of a legend to me, though. So, so I was like, kid wave. Yeah. When did you make the transition? Though? It wasn't a transition. I had a lot of nicknames back then. So it wasn't like that was my name. Niggas ain't see me and say, yo, what up, Kid Wade? <laughs> it, it was just in my breakdancing crew <laughs> when we was kids. Yeah. So that, that followed me everywhere, the Kid Wave thing. But uh, Nasty Nas comes from, first I was rapper Nas because it was this kid, this, du this dude named Rapper Ron. And Rapper Ron was dope. So he just walked by and he just, you tell him to say a rhyme and he just beat on the, uh, the, the building inside the lobby or on the benches and he just freestyled about whatever you wear and rap around, you know, but, so I was like, I like that, I'm rapping Nas. So, um, everybody be like, yo, this dude is nice or this dude is nasty, this dude is nice or he's nasty, say that, like, this dude, everybody, so everybody starts saying, this kid is nice, that kid is nice, but nasty meant like, He's on another, you know? So I was like, nasty. Yeah, yeah, I ain't, I ain't rapping Nas now. I was like, nasty. So it went from rapping Nas to nasty Nas. And I used to have dreads. So <laughs> I'll give you some more. This kid, uh, DJ Hot Day, he had a lot of jokes back then. And he used to be like, he used to see me, nasty Nas with the nasty dreads. <laughs> so he was the first one to call me, even though I had named myself that on the low. He called me that without knowing, just fucking with me. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You have that that great line about X Clan hair with dreads at the top of my seat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so on halftime, uh, you have that line uh, about go to hell with the foul cop who shot, shot Garcia. And so getting serious for a second, I was wondering if that was, if you could tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it was a, a recent um, death in, I think, Washington Heights. And, um, yeah, cat, a cat, this cat Garcia, I can't remember his last name. He got killed around the time I was writing that song. So I, I almost dedicated a verse to that, to that, that, uh, that issue. But um, I managed to just keep it in there, just slip it in there really quick. Yeah, it was an incident that happened in, if I'm not mistaken, Washington Heights, New York. Cop killed a kid, a teenager. Um, so obviously you start saying I rap for listeners one time to my ladies and prisoners, Hennessy Bullets and Old School. What do you rap for? Do you rap for the same people today? Who do you rap for today? Yeah, same people. It's a, it, well, I said I rap for listeners. That was the first rap, the line. I rap for listeners, bluntheads, still rap for bluntheads, fly ladies, of course. <laughs> uh, prisoners. prisoners, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, word. That's... Um, on that same tune, obviously, you're, you're, you know, you're remembering, you're looking back in your neighborhood, and uh, you talk about that, on that song, you talk about Fat Cat, you talk about Supreme Team, um, about hustlers, Queens hustlers, uh, from when you were growing up, and so back when you were growing up, back when you were writing that stuff, how did you view people like Cream people like Fat Cat? Um, at that point, I, I, I mean, I didn't know them. 
I didn't know them. I, I speak about it the way they, they were spoken about in the street. You know, it was like Fat Cat. I knew somebody that was related to Fat Cat. I saw their life change because he was rich. I saw them go from rags to riches just because they were related to him. Um, Supreme Team, um, of course, that name was just huge, you know. Um, you know, it, it was it was a it was a rap song. Um, what's the guy's Malcolm McLaren? I think he might have made it. The world famous Supreme Team show. So you already had heard of that. So now somebody in the in the in the, um in Queens in Jamaica Queens had this name, and you know Supreme comes from the five percent uh, five percenters. So you know you know there was a seriousness to it. And you'd hear about them all the time, all these do- guys that were um, in that crew. And you know, you know, it was it was serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you definitely, you talk, you said his name, you know, comes from five percent stuff, and there's obviously a lot of five percent stuff scattered throughout the album.